Hey everybody and welcome back to Game Night Date Night and we are on episode 21. Um, so that means we've been doing this for 21 months now, so that's amazing. Um, now Game Night Date Night is in collaborations with games and couples, uh, which do amazing things. So they concentrate on couple counseling, uh, utilizing board game as a tool to bring couples together which I think is amazing and one of the way that they do that is they've created a rating system to help couples figure out which game would best suit their need now this will rate on three different aspects from one to five now keep in mind one is not bad five is not good it really just depends on where you are as a couple and what you're trying to accomplish so the first thing that they rate on is conversation and connection potential how much opportunity is there to hold a conversation and maybe for as a couple this is a time that you guys come together and catch up with each other and having the opportunity of having a lot of conversation suits you best or maybe things have been tense and things flare up easily and having less conversation might suit you better f right now. Um, the second thing is getting to know you. How much is going to be revealed by your partner or from your partner as they play the game? Um, so that's an interesting one. You know, sometimes it, it, you're new into the relationship and you're still discovering things, or maybe you know you're newly empty nester and trying to learn uh, from each other again. So uh, having a higher score there might be something more important. Or maybe you guys have been together for years and years and this isn't a big aspect for you. Um, and then the final one is potential for hurt feelings and conflict. Let's face it, board games a lot of time you're trying to be the winner so that means there's going to be a loser and depending on how that goes and how the game is maybe there's a lot of take that element um, maybe it's co-op game and actually has very little potential for hurt feelings and maybe that suits you best um, so every week we talk about the game of the week and I try to have a theme every month so for the month of October I went with dice games um, and the first one was dice minor I just recently got this one back to the table and I was like okay yeah this is such a fun one and what's really neat with this one is it is quick so if you don't have a lot of time it's just like after supper oh and then it's like quickly let's play something that's neat and fun and quick this is the perfect one for this um, it's a dice draft game it plays in three rounds so you have this little mountain that you fill up with the dice and you take turn taking dice and then you'll roll uh, well you have those dice you'll score them you're trying to get with the white dice like a run of one two three four five and so on um, the other dice have special abilities that'll either mitigate those dice or allow you to do different things or they'll give you positive scores or they'll give you negative scores um, it's a neat game it looks great on the table but let's look at the ratings so for conversation connection potential I'm giving this one a four out of five you're taking a dice you're adding it to your pile until you are refreshed and you reroll your dice and you draft more dice so there's really lots of opportunity uh, to have a conversation as you're playing and this isn't a complex game now for getting to know you I'm giving this one a three out of five it's just interesting to see which dice are they gonna go for are they kinda push your luck it's like really you're gonna grab the four but you haven't even got the two and the three yet you, you think you can do the run um, you know so it's kind of interesting to see how gutsy they're gonna be while they're playing um, and then for hurt feelings and conflict I'm giving this one a two out of five um, you know there's the potential that you know they're taking the dice that they want but you can also kind of hand dice over to the other player and you re-roll them so okay I'm gonna roll this too and I hope you get the dun like the um, the rock rolls or you maybe I hope you get the dragons or like cuz those are gonna be negative score and then you kinda try to pass those on to the other players yeah, so but it's very minor um, so hurt feelings and conflict I'm giving this one a pretty low score this is what the box cover looks like uh, and this is the 3D uh, mountain now this is the retail copy that the deluxe edition I think is like formed plastic one um, but it looks so cool and then you add your dice and then it's all sitting on this like little mountain shape a uh, little holder and it's just a very neat neat looking game um, and here's the game so this was mid game I think actually we're at the end there um, and yeah you're doing the runs with the white dice the yellow dice are gonna give you gold and if you get a beer beer allows you to reroll that dice give it to the other player but then you can draw two dice uh, on your next turn um, it's just a very neat quick simple fun game 
The next one that I talked about is Dandelions. This one is a fairly newer game. Um, I bought it, it's a tiny game, and then it was a roll and move game. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> so, it, I wasn't sure what I was getting myself into, and then I ended up playing it, and it's actually really neat. Um, you're moving your piece or along the gardens going around you roll it like well you roll all your dice and you have all your dice in front of you and you kind of decide which one you want to spend and you move your piece that many space and where it lands is where you're going to drop your dice because your dice technically are your dandelion seeds and you're trying to spread across the different gardens some gardens are going to be worth more points um, and then if you place them in a spot where there's already a dice with the same number then all those dice move to the next garden which is good. Maybe it's going to a higher point guard, but maybe you're the highest point guard and it all goes to the lowest point. So it's a very neat game. Like the first of all, artwork, colors, it is gorgeous. Um and um the gameplay is very simple, but there is you know, like you're still kinda like, hey, well if I go there now I can drop this, this is gonna stay there, that's gonna be you know, so there's like simple strategy to it, but it does enough to keep you interested. Now let's have a look at the rating system, conversation con uh, connection potential, four out of five. This is a simple game, you just place your dice, move your pieces, and so there's a lot of opportunities to have a conversation as you're playing with your spouse. Um getting to know you, two out of five. You know, like it depends on what you have, what you move. Um, there's a little bit of strategy there, but not tons and tons per se, like you are at the mercy of the dice. So I wouldn't say this is one that you would discover tons from your partner. Uh, hurt feelings and conflict, I'm giving this one a 1 out of 5. There's very little conflict. It's where the dice land might cause dice to move over. Most of the time, it's to your advantage. So there's very little opportunity for hurt feelings and conflict. Now, this is what the box looks like. And I think it is just such a neat looking game. Um, and this is the game all set up. So you have the different garden tiles all set up in a circle. And you're just going to be moving your your um, token around in a circle as you drop the dice and then once all the dice have been played you're gonna score uh, all the dice like who has a major well each dice on a garden is gonna score that black number on the bottom um, and then whoever has the majority is gonna count the pips on all the dice if they have majority so if you ideally you have majority with like a six dice so you get to count a lot of pips um, and it's just a very very neat game and then the next one that we talked about was Dice Forge. Now Dice Forge is cool because it's you're actually crafting your dice. You're going to be popping off the pieces on the side of your dice and putting new pieces trying to make your dice more powerful. So that is neat and unique. You don't see that very often in games. Um, looking at the, um, the rating system for this one, so for conversation and connection potential, I'm giving this one a 3 out of 5. Um, you know, between your turn, you, there's there is some opportunity to hold a conversation, but there is still a lot going on. There's not tons of downtime because on everybody's turn, everybody rolls their dice, and then depending on what you rolled, you get to count that on your board that keeps track of your resources. So there's not lots of downtime, but it's not a super complicated game that you wouldn't have the opportunity to hold a conversation. Getting to know you, I'm giving this one a four out of five. There's a lot more to consider here. Um, you know, are you gonna take the card? Are you gonna try to spend the resources to go get a new dice piece to upgrade your dice? And then if you're gonna do that, which one are you gonna pick? And are where are you going to put it on the dice? Are you going to be one where it's like, I'm going to have my multipliers on one dice and then I'm going to have my resources on the other dice so I try to kind of multiply my resources most of the time or is a lot to consider here. Hurt feelings and conflict, I'm giving this one a 2 out of 5. The other player can boot you out of the spot that you're at. Um, you do kind of get an advantage of that, but maybe kind of you were hoping to do something there. So that's kind of one other thing that can happen. Or maybe they're going into the spot grabbing the dice side that you were hoping to get. And now it's gone. You can't get it anymore. So there's a little bit of get in the way type of um, elements in this game where you're going to be in somebody else's way or they're going to get in your way. But otherwise, the hurt feelings potential is fairly low. Um, this is what the box looks like um, and then this is the game all set up one thing I'll say is the setup for this game like the the um, 
the box layout, the way everything comes together, is very well organized, which is good because if all those little dice pieces went flying everywhere, that would really suck. But there's a tray with the sleeve that keeps everything in place, so that's good. Um, and then these are the dice, and you pop off the side, so they start with like a basic um, resources that you can get, but you can pop them off and get, you know, pr um, victory points, or you can get more resources and you'll see some of the size will actually give you multiple resources of different kinds so it's such a neat game just for that element alone I think um, and the last game that we talked about the month because you know it was Halloween Elder Sign which is a Cthulhu themed game um, and Elder Sign is a dice game where you have dice you're trying to roll different symbols to be able to cover what's on the card so that you can unlock that card or battle that monster or get through the trap that's there and then if you're successful there is great rewards if you're not successful you will take damage or worse you'll go insane uh, just such a neat game I love as well the clock element to it you have this clock that has like the hand will go like at every quarter of an hour or every 50 minutes I guess and every time it gets back to midnight you flip a card and something bad happens. Um, but it is so thematic, so neat. Uh, I really enjoy this one. Now, rating-wise, conversation, connection, potential, I'm giving this one a 3 out of 5, mainly because you can go as quickly or as slowly as you want with this. If you want to hold a conversation, you can fit that in. Um, there's no time restraint in this game at all, but there is quite a bit going on, so if you're kind of actively playing, you're probably not going to have tons and tons of conversation as you're playing, but if you really wanted to, you could. Um, getting to know you, I'm giving this one a 3 out of 5. It's interesting to see which door they're going to try to go and compete. You know, are they going to try to spend some stuff to get the specialty dice? Are they going to waste it now? Are they going to invest it now? You know, like depending on how you see that. And, um, but at the end of the game, it's very much you're at the mercy of the dice because it is a dice rolling game. So are you going to be successful and be able to get through the door? It's, um, it's, it's a neat game, though. Uh, hurt Feelings and Conflict, I'm giving this one a 1 out of 5 mainly because this is a cooperative game. We're on the same side and you can actually collaborate with each other. So, okay, I'm going to go over here. I'm at this spot. If you come and try after me, I'm going to make this dice so you can actually utilize this dice. And then they can assist you on your turn. So, it's very much a cooperative game. Uh, helping each other is definitely part of the goal here because, you know, everybody got to team together against the evil of Cthulhu. Um, and this is what the box looks like and this is the game all set up and that clock is just so cool looking um, and the artwork is neat and then the flavor text and it was very I think it's a very neat interesting game and that was it for the games of October so be sure to follow us on Instagram at Mel's underscore board game underscore room as well as games and couple we're also on Facebook at Mel's board game room and games and couple love in the age of board game and the YouTube channel uh, Mel's board game game room and games and couple love in the age of board game. Bye everybody.